time again for another video presentation. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about determining friction. Now we have used friction in some of our calculations um, where friction was just given to you in the problem. This time you're going to be calculating friction and uh, we're going to see how that works. It builds on some concepts that we've done before so this should be somewhat familiar to you. Friction itself is an interaction between two surfaces and uh, you probably know a little bit about that anyway. If something is sliding across a surface, then it has friction uh, to deal with. And since we've talked about the force that a surface supplies to an object, we've defined that as the normal force, it shouldn't come as a big surprise that the normal force is related to the friction. The bigger that force the surface supplies, the more friction you're talking about. Okay. Friction can be static or kinetic, meaning static is uh, stationary and kinetic is moving. Have you ever tried to push a heavy object across a floor? You probably have. And you probably also noticed that it takes more effort to get the thing moving than to keep it moving. Once you get it moving, it's a little easier to move, and uh, that would be the kinetic friction. So the static friction is when the object is sitting at rest, and you have to overcome that. Really, at a microscopic level, the uh, surfaces are entwined with each other. One is overlapping the other, and that's what makes the uh, friction. But once you're sliding across the surface, you have less friction to deal with. So the kinetic friction is when you're moving. The static friction is when you're stationary. And, um, well, I think I've already given it away, but which one is larger, the static or the kinetic friction? Well, of course, it is the static friction. All right, we're not going to distinguish between static friction and kinetic friction in our calculations. We'll just be talking about friction. Okay, so to figure out the friction, it has something to do with the normal force, but it also depends on the two surfaces. You know, for the same object with the same normal force, friction will be different if it was ice, let's say, or maybe a rough surface or a dry surface. Um, and think about that when you're out driving your cars. I know a lot of my students are just starting to drive for the first time or getting ready to drive. And, of course, the friction gets reduced when it's ice instead of asphalt that we're talking about. Okay, so the symbol here, this U, uh, actually it's the Greek letter mu, but this symbol here is the symbol for the coefficient of friction. And the friction itself is going to be Fn multiplied by mu, where Fn is the normal force. So it's the normal force, as we've suggested, multiplied by the coefficient of friction that gives you the value of friction. Okay. One other thing about the coefficient of friction, and you can see it in this problem here, is the coefficient of friction is one of the few values that has no unit with it. It's just a number. It's a ratio between the friction and the normal force. So let's see how it works here. What is the force of friction if the mu is 0.2 and the normal force is 40 newtons? Well, as always, the first step to a problem is identifying the information. So here I have identified the normal force and I have identified the coefficient of friction, multiply the two together, and in this case the friction is 8 newtons. And I hope that makes some sense to you. And uh, of course, if it doesn't, then come back to class. Ask me some questions. We can go over it then. All right, let's see some other examples and uh, how this might play out in some calculations. All right, so what is the force of friction? Oh, you can read it as well. But what is the force of friction when mu is equal to 0.3 and the mass is 10 kilograms? Well, 10 kilograms is not the normal force. But you may remember that for our class, now this is for our physics class, the normal force is equal to the weight. In every example that I will give you, the normal force and the weight are going to be equal to each other. Equal, but in opposite directions. And the free body diagram show us the direction of the normal force and the weight, that they're in opposite directions, right? But the, uh, they're equal in value for this class. So first of all, we're going to calculate the normal force by using our weight equation. Take the mass multiplied by g, the acceleration due to gravity, and we have a normal force of 98 newtons. Okay, so we had to do that extra step before we could solve for the friction. Remembering again that mass is not normal force, but um, using the mass we could calculate the weight, 
taking the mass multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, and for our class, the normal force and the weight will always be equal. Okay, so now we're ready. Uh, we have the normal force, the 98 newtons. We have the coefficient, and just like our first problem, we can take that normal force, multiply it by the coefficient, and for this problem, the friction was 29.4 newtons. Well, that's it for determining friction. Uh, we'll use this concept in some pretty advanced ways where we have to tie a lot of different things in together. But for now, we just start with the idea of determining the friction. And that was the end of our short video presentation for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and taking your notes. And I look forward to seeing you back in the classroom.